With the huge update and Vanguard integration with Warzone resulting in the brand new map Caldera, we've, as expected, had a colour palette change on the game. In my opinion, I actually quite like the brighter and greener map of Caldera, however it can still look a little dull, or in some cases, too saturated, particularly if you play on console or don't have an amazing graphics card on PC. Thankfully, there are a few things we can do to still improve how Warzone looks, and see people a little better too. In the past on Warzone, the visuals have always been a little dark and dull, and the challenge has been to brighten up the map and make features pop. On Caldera, things aren't quite as bad, and in some instances, we want to actually tone down some of the more extreme ends of brightness and saturation, so we can decipher different colours and textures easier, and ultimately see that little bit clearer. Now, sadly on consoles, we don't have extensive settings to play with, although of course you can tweak further on your monitors. Some monitors have built-in modes for gaming, and specifically, first-person shooter games. Have a little play around and tweak them after you've modified your Warzone settings to see if you can get any little extra details to pop out. For example, sharpness you can't control through in-game settings, but on your monitor, you usually can. This can help you make out the difference between a background and a foreground, which can in some instances just end up being an enemy. Let's start by taking a look at maximizing your frame rate in Warzone first. For next generation consoles such as Xbox Series X and PS5, they can run Warzone at 120 frames per second. So on PS5, make sure you have enabled 120Hz output as auto, and on the main system settings menu, select save data and game slash app settings and change your game presets to performance mode. By turning these settings on, your PS5 will automatically play games at 120 frames per second if the game is supported for that. On Xbox Series X and S, it's a similar process. Go into general TV and display options, and make sure you've got your refresh rate on 120 hertz. One thing to note is that some players have reported that games still occasionally run at 60 frames per second if HDR is turned on, so you may need to disable it to ensure top performance. Also, if you don't have a HDMI 2.1 on your monitor, you will need to change your resolution to get the 120 frames per second. Make sure your monitor is set to 1080p resolution, as you won't be able to get 120 frames at something like 2160p on your monitor. Now, at the moment, there does seem to be a bug where next gen console players can't quite get to the 120 frames per second, and this particularly seems to impact Xbox players. But rest assured that this is just a bug, and it is absolutely Raven Software vision that console players can run at 120 FPS. For last generation, sadly you are capped at 60 frames per second, and of course everyone is capped by whatever their monitor can actually run at. Most people have a 60 to 75 hertz refresh rate, meaning they can only get a maximum of 75 frames per second. So basically if their console or system can perform at higher frames, it's basically meaningless unless they upgrade their monitor. So now that we've got our consoles and monitors running in harmony, let's dive into some in-game settings that can improve the visuals in Warzone. To do this, we open up Settings, go across to Graphics, then click Start again, where we open up Accessibility. For brightness, I advise to not put it as high as maybe previously you have. I feel like the higher settings of around 60+, plus, which were kind of the go-to previously on Warzone, make the visuals seem a little saturated now that the colour palette has been overhauled. I actually recommend putting this down to essentially what the game recommends, and maybe lower. So this is where the middle, barely visible Modern Warfare logo actually becomes barely visible. So this is at around 47. Now onto colourblind settings, which we can change both on the game and on our consoles. This is where some of the biggest visual changes are made for us. Having it on disabled isn't as bad of an option with this colour palette as it was previously. But I still recommend Deutronopia or Tritonopia. The other option of Protonopia puts too many greens into the palette and the map is already pretty green. I personally run Deutronopia, I just think it allows some areas of the map to pop out where you can decipher between different common colours just that little bit better. On top of these in-game settings, you can correct your colour settings on your console. On the Xbox Series X you can go to General Settings, then Video Fidelity, then increase colour depth bits per pixel. The PS5 has further the colorblind settings through accessibility, again where you have the choice of Deutronopia and Tritonopia if you want to emphasize those color palettes further. Next up is camera movement. Put this down to 50%, which is the lowest it can go. The game may look a little less realistic on 
50%, but it's so much easier to spot important things in the environment, whether that's loot or enemies. The exact same can be said of world motion blur and film grain. They can make the game look really cool and theatrical, but ultimately they can make you miss certain things. And sometimes noticing an enemy a few milliseconds quicker is the difference between winning and losing. For weapon motion blur, I actually recommend putting this on enabled, because it appears that the lower processing demand from not having to render the whole weapon allows your system to boost a few extra frames per second, and I think that's absolutely worth it. Okay, now lastly, let's talk about the quality of graphics in Warzone. Previously, we had the option of downloading HD texture packs to improve graphic quality. However, we now have the option of utilizing the on-demand texture streaming setting. If you've got a good enough connection to allow extra bandwidth to be sent to streaming high-quality textures, as well as 24 gigabytes free on your console, I absolutely recommend putting this setting on high quality. The impacts on your latency and connection are minimal if you have a good connection. Of course, if you haven't got the best connection, you can go for standard quality or even disable the option altogether. This also might be the best option for you if you simply want the absolute best connection possible when playing and don't care too much about how pretty the map is. I personally go for a middle ground of standard quality. My connection is good, but I want my latency to be as good as it can possibly be to ensure I win the most gunfights possible. But at the same time, I wanted important textures to be clear so I can get important visual cues too. I hope this video has helped you. Give it a like if it has, and subscribe for more. Bye!